What's up YouTube? It's your boy Nash here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have some very intriguing WWE news for you guys including a former champion negotiating a long-term deal with WWE. Um, oh wow, that's pretty brutal. Um, we also we could we also have potential changes to the NXT UK roster. WWE making a major, major SummerSlam announcement, and then and then also to the, and then also too we have the plans, so, so, the supposed plans for for the main event of SummerSlam, and last but not least, excuse me, last but not least, we also have a Raw superstar married. Who gets married? So we're gonna kick things off with the big changes to the NXT. So we're gonna kick things off with the big, with the big change, with the changes uh, supposedly being made to the NXT UK roster. Uh, but before we get started with that, I actually want to um, address the the Red Eyes deck deck profile that I did yesterday. Um, for those who gave it a Big thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for the support. That was, that took me, I would say it, 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 it took me about six months, I think. About six, seven, maybe eight months to do. I do have several other decks uh, coming at you, including including a deck that I'm probably not going to use. Honestly, I'll probably just use it like, like you, know, you know, just like as a casual deck. You're probably going to, you're probably thinking, what is the deck? Well, you got you guys will have to find out at some point down at some point once I have it complete and I know it's good. Uh, but but again, I do have have other decks as well coming at you in the near future, especially in the September format. Once we get the ban list, um, once we get the ban list for I think September. So with that being said, let's. So with that being said, again, thank you guys so much for for the support. I love you guys. You guys are incredible. And uh, yeah, so again, so make sure. So if you guys do want to see more, more, more deck profiles, or if you guys want to see more openings, because I do have, still, still, have yet. I still have yet to open this box up. So again, it's, it's as I said. Once the channel goes to 100, to, goes to 100 subs, I will open this up on on the channel in its entirety. But. If the channel goes to 200, I'll open up my I'll, I'll be opening up my my striking Neos box Korean on the channel as well. Um, but with that being said, let's get into the video um, because apparently the big changes for NXT UK happens to be with the roster. So big shout outs to Wrestle Talk for all four for all of the articles that we'll be discussing today. Um, let's see here. So, shoutouts to Liam Winner for this article. WWE's NXT UK brand has been on hold during the pandemic, but it appears some changes to the roster could be happening. While the below does, doesn't confirm anything for certain, it does seem to make certain implications that we shall explore. The banner for the the banner for the NXT UK for the NXT UK page on WWE.com has removed Tyler Bate, Trent Seven, and Joe Coffey as those three have been replaced by Mark Andrews, Flash Morgan Webster, and Ilya Dragunov. Bate, Seven, and Coffey all had allegations made against them recently during the hashtag Speaking Out movement, but Coffey is the only one WWE has reprimanded publicly by suspending him. It could be that those three have been removed simply due to the association with the allegations, but others have have suggested it could be that seven seven and eight in particular could be on their way to the NXT USA roster, which is currently lacking a bit where tag teams are concerned. It's worth noting that those three men are still listed on the main NXT UK roster page. They've just been removed from its banner. Stay tuned. Okay, yeah, so um that, honestly, that doesn't surprise me. Um, you know what? I honestly don't know anything about that. Let me take a look at that. Let me look it up. Hang, hang on a second, guys. I need to look it up really quick. Um, 
So hashtag. Can I get a hashtag? There we go. Um, here we are. Hashtag speaking out. Let's take a look at it. Um, oh, okay. So it also has to do with sexual abuse. Okay. I did not know about that. Okay. So, so, um, wow, that's, wow, that's kind of bizarre. Um, but seeing, but although, um, Seeing Trent Seven and Tyler Bay get called up to NXT in Orlando would not wouldn't would not surprise me. I mean, obviously they are two of the three founding fathers of NXT UK. Obviously, alongside Pete Dunne, you know, you know British Sean Style. They've literally ran rough shot throughout throughout the whole NXT UK brand. Pete Dunne is now on NXT. Uh, a former tag team champion, along with Matt Riddle, who is now on who is now on SmackDown, and uh, um, just judging by the by the allegations, I wouldn't be surprised if Joe Coffey was was suspended, but Bait and Seven got called up, or it, or it could be the other way around. Honestly, I don't want to say any, any, anything because I don't want to jeopardize what. You know, my dream job, which obviously is to be in WWE, which I'm still working on that. I'm still working on that. I'm hoping to get in before SummerSlam weekend, so we but we will see. But again though, um again these 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 allegations are just absolutely absurd. They are absolutely absurd, really crazy, but um uh, could we see that happen? Who knows? You never know. You never know what can happen because it's WWE and you never with them anything is possible. But honestly, though, I wouldn't mind seeing Tyler Bate and Trent Seven get called up to, to, to NXT um, alongside Pete Dunne. But uh, but obviously, too, Pete Dunne is still also in in the UK, and um, the prime and truth be told, um, the prime the prime minister of the UK has actually, I believe, has suspended from what I from what I. From what I understand, um, supposedly he's he's apparently um, he has suspended all travel from from the UK to to the US and vice versa. Um, again, I I don't I I don't I honestly don't know what to say say about it. But anyway, guys, now I'm gonna be talking now a former champion negotiating long term deal with WWE. Who is it? You may ask. It is none other than former United States champion. MVP, a former a former multi-time champion in WWE, has revealed that he is currently ne in negotiations with WWE for a long-term uh, deal. MVP returned to WWE earlier this year in January at the Royal Rumble, and then also competed on on Raw the night after in a loss to Rey Mysterio. It's been well documented that he intended for this to be his last out outing. And he was dedicating then dedicating it to his son, who is favorite, whose favorite wrestler is Rey, is Mysterio himself. WWE then hired him as a producer, but then started booking him as an on-screen character for a talk show segments and the odd short match here and there. Obviously, the the talk show is the VIP lounge. Obviously, uh, now speaking now speaking on the Gorilla Monsoon podcast MVP. The Gorilla Position Podcast, MVP, has said that he is currently in, negoti in negotiations with WWE over a long-term deal. He said, quote, I've had, I had every intention of retiring this year. For him, I, for him, I reached out to WWE about being a surprise entry into the Rumble, and they welcomed me with open arms. It was meant to be a gift for my son, and it went so well that I was invited to the next night. To, to the next time on Raw, and I was given the opportunity to wrestle Rey Mysterio, who is my son's favorite wrestler. Then I was offered a job as a producer, which I accepted because I had every intention of retiring anyway. I was working as a producer, and I was asked to do an on-screen VIP lounge, and then in, and then a short match. And another on-screen statement, and another, and before I knew it, my responsibilities as a producer became less and less, and I was asked to do more and more as a talent. Now I can say that WWE and myself are in negotiations for a long-term deal. Um, so obviously we know how good MVP, you know, you know, you know, is in the ring. He is arguably one of the greatest, one of the greatest U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U
since Eddie Guerrero, and we all know how good Eddie. We all know how good Eddie was. Eddie Guerrero, all, one one of the best to to ever do it. One of the best high flyers to ever do it, and I don't think there will be anyone better. Um, honestly, though, the on, honestly though, seeing seeing MVP back in WWE and potentially retiring, um, as you know. You know, as as a producer, I think that would I think that's the best thing. I I think that would be the best the best thing thing for him because MVP has been has has traveled the world. He's honed his craft. He's won multiple world championships in so many promotions. You know, in Japan and so many other you know you know promotions. And he came back to WWE because he wanted to compete in the ring for his son as a gift, which honestly is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Um, but for him to become a producer, I think it's awesome. I think uh, because that Paul Heyman is now away, like no like no longer the executive producer, I think I think something like that would really help out help out MVP and could potentially not not and I'm not saying this as, as, as a guarantee. But it could potentially boost the ratings of of Monday Night Raw, but only, but possibly only for a short time, considering the fact that both the USA Network and the Fox Network executives are losing their patience with WWE because of the fact that the ratings have gone so low. It's because of the fact that there were that there have been no fans at all, and the only quote unquote fans that we have are the trainees. And you know, are 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 the trainees at the who, you know, who train at the performance center, which is where they host the raw, you know, their shows for Raw, SmackDown, Two Hundred Five Live, and their pay per views, which is the big reason why the ratings have 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 gone so low. And I think the only time the ratings the ratings got up gone had gone up a little bit was the night after. Backlash. In my personal opinion, I think it was the night after Backlash when um, when Randy Orton was given the title of greatest wrestler of all time. Which I think the ratings did go up a bit, but after that, everything just kind of went down down a little bit. But honestly, though, um, again, again, having MVP as as a producer, I think that that, that would be perfect for him. All right, you guys, and actually that ties into what um, into the big SummerSlam announcement. So WWE has made an official announcement. And I'm literally reading, reading the article. WWE has made an official announcement regarding the situation concerning SummerSlam next month on the 23rd. It is now confirmed that the event will no will no longer be taking place at at the TD Garden in Boston as originally planned. Of course, due to the pandemic, the company made an announcement on its website, writing, "Quote in in coordination with our local partners, government officials, and TD Garden, WWE's." SummerSlam and related, and related events will no longer take place in Boston. Refunds are available at the original point of purchase. We are grateful. To, we are grateful to the city of Boston for their outlawed Sandy partnership and look forward to holding WWE events at, at the TD Garden in the future. Uh, SummerSlam will stream live on Sunday, August twenty third at seven p.m. Eastern on WWE Network. And information regarding a new location for the event is forthcoming. Of course, include of course included in that and related events is NXT Takeover 30, which takes place one day prior. Based on the past few months, it would seem likely that Takeover would be happening at Full Sail and SummerSlam at the Performance Center. However, things do seem to be advancing in terms of getting groups of people together, so we could see a bit of change. Um, honestly, though, honestly, it, this again, this doesn't surprise me. We're still under a, we're still under a pandemic. Uh, cases have have actually rose to four million here in, in the U.S., but in most states, the, I, I, I in, in most states, I, I I think they're clear. In most states here in here in the U.S., they've mel they've mellowed out with the cases, with the deaths, and everything else. So they're literally like I guess they're okay to like host events and whatnot. But in some, but in but in other states like Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Cali, you know here here in Cali, Florida, whatnot, and also and also New York is still uh, is still is still there. 
Uh, the cases are, 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 are still coming in, especially in Florida. The, the cases have got, have rose up immensely. So as far as where they could potentially hold it, I would say, I would say, I would say the performance center, but that would just be taking things way too far. I wouldn't put, I would host it somewhere where, somewhere where the cases and all that are like mellow, like, like the vi like the pandemic is mellow. In my personal opinion, I, I, that's what I, I would do. Like possibly, um, I don't know, maybe, uh. I would say Georgia because obviously Georgia and Florida are like close are, are like close together, so it would it would make sense to host to host it in in Georgia, but at, but at the same time, you know, knowing WWE, they could host it at at the Performance Center like 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 they've done since WrestleMania. So, but honestly, you you but honestly though, you never know what can happen. Um, again, this do, this really do, doesn't change things. Honestly, this does this doesn't change. This doesn't surprise me. Um. Who knows? Who knows? Um, and who knows? Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it, it'll uh, work out. Maybe it will work out. But anyway, guys, um, can I? What's what's going on here? Something wrong with this laptop? There is nothing wrong with the laptop. Okay. So now I'm going to be talking about the um, the plans for the SummerSlam main event and that and, and and it actually ties to this. So apparently according to according to several reports, um, it was reported that, that the that following their matches at WrestleMania 36 and Backlash, Edge's injury about um Edge and Randy Orton are were going to see their rivalry culminate in a match at SummerSlam in August next next month. However, Edge with Edge out of action for a torn tricep, WWE ha has had to find yet another plan for former world champion Randy Orton at the biggest party of the summer. Um, so apparently, Wrestle Talk had had reported several weeks ago that upon hearing about the injury, um, uh, Orton would uh, began pitching to pitching an idea to work with some talent from NXT at SummerSlam, which honestly it was honestly is not a bad idea. We also uh, they also report that due to the pure shortage of heels on the main roster right now, Randy Orton will be will instead be slotted into a program with WWE Champion Drew McIntyre at the show. Um, the feud was actually supposed to reportedly started on Monday's episode of Raw, but plans changed once the script for the show was torn up. Um, obviously, too, Dave Meltzer reported. Um, Saying that, saying saying that the match was as of this past week it was the new schedule for 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 SummerSlam, um, but uh, apparently it seems so counterproductive to take the title off of McIntyre for Orton. Um, honestly, though, so I'm 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 not gonna read off the rest of the the rest of the um, the rest of the of of the report. But honestly, though, on but honestly though. Um, Seeing that match, Orton versus McIntyre, I'm not so sure if, if that would be wise because Randy Orton, Randy Orton is on, has already done everything, everything, everything that he's wanted to do in WWE, and for them to take the title off of McIntyre to have to book McIntyre dropping the title to Randy Orton, that will probably be the worst, the worst case scenario because because if that were to happen. Think about what Drew McIntyre could potentially do, you know, because McIntyre, this was his life's work. It took you know, it took him 19, 19 years to become WWE champion, and now that he's done it, potentially we we could see or Orton take the title off of Drew McIntyre. I don't I don't think that's the best the best way to go, but if but but if the match does take place, you never know what. But actually, um, that was the original plan. Um, however, uh, obviously, too, if you guys remember um, from this past Monday, we have found out that um, we had found out that. That um, that supposedly the rumor 
is that um is that it's supposed it's supposed to be it's supposedly going to be Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler for the WWE Championship because Ziggler because Dolph because Drew McIntyre accepted Dolph's um accepted his uh his um his his rematch and um Honestly, though, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me, but you but you but you but you never know things things have things can change. We could potentially see um see see Randy Orton get get, get involved in it, but who knows? Who knows? Honestly, though, I'm really I'm really looking forward to seeing what 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 Monday Night Raw has in store for Drew McIntyre from from this day going into SummerSlam. But guys, that guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Question of the day. Where do you think WWE should host SummerSlam weekend? Let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious to see what what, what you guys have to say. And that is gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you guys do not miss out on any new content that comes your way because there's always something new to talk about when, you know, for both WWE and for Yu-Gi-Oh! Again, I do have several other deck profiles um, uh, coming at you within the next several months. I am still working on them. I am working on them extensively every single day trying to perfect them. So, so be sure to... Uh, so try to bear bear with me on that one. Also, do, also do you guys follow me on Twitter and Instagram? All three of my links, my my two Twitters and my one Instagram. The links are down in the in the description below. So be sure so be sure to follow me there. Um, I try to post a post a little more, a little bit more than normal, but I but I will try to. Uh, anyway, again. If, again, if the channel go, gets to 100 subs, I'll open this up on the channel. It is a sealed, unlimited, shining darkness booster box. And then, of course, if the channel gets to 200 or more, I will open up a Korean Strike and Neos box on the channel. I know that it is um, not an English, but um, it's still a really awesome set. So, so make sure you guys so make sure you guys subscribe if you guys are new. And on that, this is your boy Nash, signing out.